Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel Civil Life. Myself Milan Patel, Assistant Professor at Delhi Institute of Engineering and Technology. Today's topic is Town Planning. This is the third lecture of this topic. In previous lecture, lecture number two, we have covered two topics: land use and zoning. In today's lecture, we will cover first low cost housing. Second, slums, and third, we will cover what is FSI. Okay, let's begin with low cost housing. In low cost housing, we will cover first what is low cost housing. Second, various materials used in low cost housing, and third, what are the various techniques used to construct this low cost housing? Okay. First, we will understand what is low cost housing. The dream of owning a house for low income and middle income families is becoming a difficult reality nowadays. Okay, so so low cost housing is the concept of innovative ideas of budgeting efficiently instead of regarding the quality of material. Okay, this is the image of low cost housing. Okay, without regarding the quality of material. how you can construct the low cost housing okay low cost housing should be affordable for people whose income is below the medium household income okay low cost housing construction is possible with the use of low cost building materials and planning okay so what are the materials which are used in low cost housing construction let's say the material should be reused it should be locally available okay so that transportation cost should be less it should be recyclable material okay it should be energy efficient material okay its salvage value should be more okay after using the material the value of the material is called as salvage value okay it should be non toxic okay it should not harm to the people which are going to be live in this building okay it should be pollution preventing it should be biodegradable material and it should have low embodied energy means in production phase of this material the energy consumption of this material should be less okay so this should be the material selection criteria for low cost housing buildings okay now let's understand how you can construct this low cost housing These are the various construction techniques used in the construction of low cost housing. First technique is selection of load bearing structures instead of frame structures. Okay? Because the cost of load bearing structure is comparatively less than the frame structure. It is also easier to construct and require much lesser time. Okay? Second technique is in foundation. Okay? Because foundation involves 10 to 15% of total building cost. If you save the cost in foundation, you also save the cost in overall building. Okay, the depth of the foundation is generally three to four feet for normal soil. We can change into two to three feet of good soil by soil investigation. If the soil is good, you can expand the foundation up to two to three feet only. Okay, it, it is not required to expand the foundation to three to four feet. Okay, so one to two feet in the depth of foundation is saved okay for soft soil it is not advisable to decrease the foundation depth okay third technique is use of hollow concrete block in load bearing walls like this these are the hollow concrete blocks because of using this type of uh, hollow concrete block the mortar requirement is less okay so by this you can achieve the economy okay it is also cheaper than the bricks or stone which are used nowadays okay it is also lightweight easy to handle and work on okay less mortar is consumed and also environment friendly because it is made of flash and flash is a recyclable material in the power plant okay fourth technique is staircase in staircase how you can achieve economy okay use of precast staircase instead of cast in situ staircase 
okay these are the precast staircases you have to just buy this staircase and install in your house okay its construction is cheap and quick because they are made in the some type of industries okay no labor of work is required in construction at the site okay it can be simply supported or can deliver also okay fifth filler slab for ceilings you have to use this type of slabs for uh, ceilings okay it is similar to normal rcc slabs where bottom concrete is replaced with filler materials like bricks tiles blocks etc because of using this filler material like bricks tiles and blocks or a consumption of concrete in slab is reduced it doesn't compromise the strength and its economic and safe to use it also provide the pleasing pattern as per the user's choice okay the next technique is use of prefabrication of structural elements or precast elements okay maximum use of precast elements reduces the overall cost of construction okay it will save time as well as reduce the cost okay durability also increases because of using precast components because these precast components are constructed at particular site under the favorable conditions okay uh, the examples of precast components which can be used in construction are uh, the walls okay or some doors or windows okay etc okay doors and windows can also be used as a precast members okay this save cost up to 30% and save time also okay these are the precast windows or precast doors okay this can be used in the construction okay these are the various techniques which can be used while construction of low cost housing okay now let's move to the second topic in today's lecture which is slum in this topic we will cover first what is slum second reasons of slum formation and third how you can prevent this slum formation okay first we will understand what is slum slum is predominantly an overcrowded poverty stricken area having inadequate open spaces and unhealthy residential buildings okay it is an area where basic amenities like water supply drainage sewerage system electricity for standard living is lacking or it is not there okay unhealthy conditions prevail and various diseases are flourish okay this type of area is called as slum area the slums are very common in india about 25% population of any city lives in slum in india the largest slum in the world is kalista in cape town south africa having population for lakh okay second is kibera in nairobi kenya okay having population 7 lakh dharavi in mumbai india having population 10 lakh the population in dharavi is more but the area covering this dharavi is comparatively less than kalista and kibera okay fourth is neza mexico having population 12 lakh okay and the last is orange town in karachi pakistan having population 24 lakh okay these are the largest slum areas in the world okay this is how this slum area looks like okay now let's understand the reasons of slum formation why these slums are formed first is because of decentralization so what is decentralization decentralization means rich people are getting rich in time and poor people are going to be more poorer okay this is called as decentralization in particular country okay due to decentralization rich and middle class people move out from overcrowded central area and poor people are left in overcrowded area okay and creates the slums okay second is poverty okay the main cause of slum formation is poverty okay because of underemployment and poor economic condition people cannot pay higher rent for decent living and therefore move into the slum area 
third is lack of education because of lacking in education people may be easily dragged into social evils like drugs without any attention to improve the living condition of the family okay fourth is lack of zoning okay without zoning the development will take place in half as a manner or uncontrolled manner which leads to formation of slums okay if there is no zoning in the town uh, someone can shut the industries behind your house okay or someone easily create the slum in the town okay fifth is population growth because of more population growth there is a lag between growth of people and the construction of houses okay this shortage of houses leads to the formation of slums okay because people are not having the houses for them for that living so they have to go to this slum sixth is rapid industrialization because of rapid industrialization workers employed in factories or industries which have low income and can't afford daily traveling from home to the industries they make slums near the industries and this is how slums are developed in industrial zones also okay seven these migrants persons shifting to urban area may illegally occupy vacant land and put their huts there or slums there okay this results into formation of these slums eight is repair and maintenance if your old house is not properly repaired or maintained it is easily converted into this slum okay ninth is inadequate power this is the main reason nowadays okay local authority doesn't have enough power to prevent this slum formation okay and the last is improper use of land there is some vacant land or unusable land in the town but it is not properly used so because of improper use of land slums are formed okay these are the various reasons of slum formation now let's understand how you can prevent this slum formation okay first by creating or by construction of cheap housing you can easily prevent this slum formation government should invest public funds for construction of sufficient number of low cost houses for such houses should be made available to poor people at subsidized rates with all watchwords amenities and utility services okay second is compulsion to employers the authorities should enforce the law that the employers should provide better housing to the staff okay third construction of building sub normal standard of building should be restricted by farming and enforcing rules and regulations okay so by creating number of rules and regulation you can easily prevent this slum formation okay unauthorized construction the authorities should not allow unauthorized construction of huts and temporary structures on vacant land okay the authorities should have sufficient power to demolish if such type of construction have taken place in particular area fifth is rent restriction there is some rule of increment in rent okay the rents of the house should be restricted by rent restriction act there should be one rent restriction act in the town okay next is maintenance and repairs the responsibility of maintaining and carrying out repair work should be fixed by the government okay then either the landlord or tenant has to carry out repairs so as to keep the existing building in a good condition okay and it is not converted into this slum area okay and the last is social education the slum dwellers should be properly educated to take care of their health cleanliness and general welfare of their family okay by using this you can easily transfer the people which are living in slum area into their own house okay these are the various steps which are to be taken place to prevent this slum formation that's all about the slums now let's understand the third topic in today's lecture which is fsi so what is fsi it is a floor space index 
it is also called as FAR floor area ratio or FR floor ratio okay it is the ratio of total built up area of all floors including walls to the area of the land or the plot area okay so what is built up area let's understand the difference between carpet area built up area and super built up area is that okay what is carpet area is the area where you can lay your carpet in the house okay the green portion in the building is the carpet area okay what is built up area if you add the thickness of the wall or the wall area in the carpet area you can achieve the built up area okay so built up area is the carpet area plus the wall area okay in blue color built up area is shown okay. and what is super built up area it is the built up area plus the common area of the building like lobbies or common uh, garden okay stairs lifts okay these are the common areas okay so super built up area is the built up area plus common areas okay here in fs1 okay built up area is considered of all floors divided by the plot area so fsi is the ratio of area of the floor to the area of the plot like this this is the area of the floor this is the area of the plot okay if you divide the area of the floor by the plot area you can easily achieve the fsi okay now let's understand various exception in calculating built up area for fsi there are some exception in the building bylaws okay for calculating built up area for fsi okay first exception is parking area with clear height 2.4 meter and in case of slabs with beams height should be less than 2.8 meter okay if the parking area having clear height 2.4 meter okay whole parking area can be excluded in calculation of built up area for fsi okay second spaces of whole of plinth with clear height less than 2.8 at ground level can be excluded while calculating build up area okay third interior open spaces of the buildings and tubs maximum 4% of the total build up area can be excluded in calculation of build up area fourth security cabin or watchman cabin up to 4 square meter build up area can be excluded okay fifth weathering shape or chhajja up to 0.6 meter projection okay can be excluded in built up area next stair case with landing width equal to or less than the stair width can be excluded okay from the built up area next is lift lift well or lift cabin as well as the water tank of the building can be excluded from the built up area for fsi okay next is open to sky spaces or some courtyards of the building can be excluded from the built up area for fsi so this all area can be excluded in calculation of built up area for fsi okay that's all about fsi i hope you all understand these three topics what is low cost housing what are the selection criteria for low cost housing construction what are the various techniques which can be used to construct this low cost housing what is slum what are the reasons of slum formation how you can prevent slum formation what is fsi and which area can be excluded while calculating built up area for fsi that's all about the chapter town planning see you soon in the next lecture thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe to my youtube channel civil line thank you